Hello grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture and a brand new unit. Uh, this one as you can see is titled Influential Psychology Experiment. So um, there's so many different cool experiments that have been done in psychology that have influenced the way that we think um, about uh, people and about development and about so many different situations. So I picked out um, a few that I thought were pretty interesting. Obviously, there are going to be a whole bunch more that I could have included, but we are going to just go with these ones. So that's this whole unit is about different psychology experiments. You'll be, you should be able to, you know, explain the experiment, explain uh, what happened in it, the reason they were doing the experiment, um, what the results were, and what the overall conclusion is as well. Um, at the end of each lesson, you're going to get uh, questions to do, and those will be extending from the experiment. So there might be some questions that have to do with the experiment, but uh, it will be extra information, things that you'll need to do some research about, um, you might need to ask your friends or myself about, and that's what the lessons are. Let's get right into the first one. So lesson one is about the Stanley Milgram experiment. I might have mentioned it in class previously as an example, but we're going to talk about what this experiment is and um, how it's influenced um, psychology as we go forward. So, uh, the purpose of the experiment, and we're going to kind of try to follow this theme as we go through each experiment, start with the purpose. So the purpose of the experiment um, was this. Milgram in 1963 conducted an experiment focusing on the conflict between obedience to authority and personal conscience. So do you listen to uh, authority no matter what your personal feelings are about it? He examined justifications for acts of genocide offered by those accused at the World War II uh, Nuremberg trials. There shouldn't be a the here. Um, so usually what they would say was that they were just listening to, um, authority. They had, like, it wasn't like their choice. They were just doing what they were told. And, you know, if they didn't do what they were told, they were going to be punished. So they, they just were obedient. So their defense was often based on obedience, that they were just following orders from their superiors. So he wanted to examine that, like, is, is that... A valid defense essentially so the procedure what he did there were three individuals that were involved in the experiment um, the first was the experimenter so he would be involved in all of the experiments and he would be in charge wear a white lab coat um, be the authority figure so experimenter is key point two and then teacher and learner are key, is key point one that we also got on this slide so the experimenter was the person in charge running the experiment in a lab white uh, lab coat. He was the authority figure. The teacher um, was the volunteer, and the volunteer was led to believe that they were just assisting, that they were just there to do, um, you know, what the experimenter told them, um, because the experimenter needed help. He had to be more objective. That's what they thought that they were doing. Um, but they were actually the subjects of the study. So the teacher was the person that the experimenter was studying, but the teacher didn't know it. They thought they were just helping out. The learner was an actor in the experiment and he pretended to be a volunteer. So we're gonna get into what, their, what actually happened next. So the experimenter was the authority figure. The teacher is the subject that we're studying and the learner is an actor. And this is how they were set up. So this is the experimenter, he's at his desk, doing his thing. This is the teacher, who is the person we're studying, and he's got a switchboard, and it's got actually different electric bolts on it. So there was, I don't know, from about 100 or less to 450, which is a lethal, um, a lethal amount of electricity. And then there's a wall here, and you can see that the electric panel has a wire that it looks like it's hooked up to the learner's chair. And again, the learner is a volunteer and this is not actually hooked up. So let's get back, let's, let's explain this and then I'll go back to this picture. So the teacher or the subject and the actor learner arrived at the session together. 
The experimenter told them that they were taking part in a study to see what the effect of punishment is on the subject's ability to memorize content. Essentially, they were going to see, like, one person was going to memorize stuff and the other person was going to punish them whenever they got it wrong, and they thought they were going to try to see what that uh, correlation was. Did more punishment make it more difficult to memorize content? So the learner was then strapped into what looked like an electric chair to, quote-unquote, ensure that the learner actor would not escape. Now, um, there was no electricity strapped to this chair, and the learner was an actor, so there was no fear of them actually escaping. This was all just for show, because again, we're studying the teacher, and it's the person who will be uh, administering the shocks. So, the teacher asked the learner questions, and for every wrong response, they are instructed to administer a shock. In reality, there were no shocks. So, we have the teacher here administering shocks to the learner whenever the learner gets something wrong, in reality, there are no shocks. So it's all about this person's reaction. We don't actually want to hurt the learner. If at any time the teacher indicated a desire to halt the experiment, the experimenter gave prods. And these prods were these in order. So essentially, as you'll see from the videos that um, are assigned at the end of the lesson, uh, the actor or the learner would be like screaming in pain, saying no, help, uh, asking them to stop. Um, and this would, you know, cause the teacher to, you know, be like, whoa, should I do this or not? And if at any time the, exper the teacher thought that they should stop, the experimenter would say these, please continue. The experiment requires that you continue. It is absolutely essential that you continue. And then lastly, you have no choice you must go on. So essentially the authority figure, which is key point three, the authority figure was giving these prods to see if this would be enough to cause the teacher to keep administering shocks. So we have the teacher here administering fake shocks, the learner sometimes crying out for help, screaming in pain, and the experimenter telling the teacher to keep going. You must continue. It is absolutely essential that you continue and then observing what this person does. So the results, what actually came of this? So in, the, in Milgram's first set of experiments, uh, this has been reproduced several times, 65% uh, or 26 out of 40 of the experiments participants administered the experiments final massive 450 volt shock. This is after the learner screaming for help uh, pleading not to be shocked anymore, screaming every time that there was a shock and pain. 65% um, of people followed or orders and administered a massive 450 volt shock. Subjects were uncomfortable doing so and displayed uh, varying degrees of tension and stress. Um, and these signs could have included anything involved here. So sweating, trembling, stuttering, biting their lips, groaning, and digging their fingernails into their skin. And as you see in one of the videos when they reproduced the experiment, uh, much more recently, um, nervous fits of laughter, which uh, are very common when someone is nervous. So the conclusion, um, and this is straight from Milgram himself, other people can draw other conclusions uh, from this. Uh, you can word this, you know, in another way, and you'll do a little bit more research, watch some videos on this to get a little bit of a better idea of what happened. But from Milgram, uh, stark authority was pitted against the subject's strongest moral imperatives, and we've got morals as our fourth key point. So authority was pitted against morals. What someone is telling you to do in a position of authority versus what you believe is right and what you feel right doing. So stark authority was pitted against the subject's strongest moral imperatives against hurting others. And when the subjects, with the subject's ears ringing with the screams of the victims, authority won more often than not. So essentially, does what his experiment was, was to see if um, the people who committed genocide in World War II, whether their defense of just following um, orders was a valid defense, 
just kind of might say that it like it is well like they did the crime so they're guilty of it of course but following orders is a very powerful um incentive you know it, it causes people to do things that are against their morals that they know is wrong so the extreme willingness of adults to go to almost any lengths on the command of an authority constitutes the chief finding of the study and that the, and the fact that most urgently demanding um in fact most urgently demanding explanation so why is it that humans will um, bow to authority follow authority do what the authority says pretty much more than half the time without stopping without saying like this is wrong they will commit atrocities um, it is kind of like a, a group theory you know that people will, will get together and um, you know do bad things together because the group is doing it but these people were individuals just following what they were told from their superiors the experimenter in this case so it is a very interesting finding doesn't excuse what people do when being told to but it's you know it gives it an explanation about why it happens the authority is just an overpowering um feeling that people seem to need to follow so your job there are two videos here i've included them in the booklet uh, that you should watch. Hopefully I can also possibly post them on the classroom or something similar. So check those out. There are the important terms for you to do, three or four of them as usual, and then the Milgram experiment questions. Usually there's five or six of those. If you guys have any questions about that, please let me know. We can talk about it in class. Send me an email. We can do it over Google Meet, whatever works for you. Um, thanks so much for watching everyone. And I appreciate it, and I will see you in class soon.